Alyssa gets served in Arizona. Um, we went to Arizona. We we're gonna do some filming. Maldonado was on a roll that day, and uh, he filmed a couple lines. And then uh, went to went to Deck Park. And Shane was all, oh, you should not tell that shit. It looks so cool. And then we did it for the love. I was like, okay, man, I'll try. So I was like doing it, right? I don't know, one just slipped out and I flipped over and checked my chin real good. When I did it, I thought I like, broke my jaw or something. I didn't break my jaw, I just like ripped my chin open like 11 stitches and uh, oh, I, I broke one tooth in half and I chipped like 12 teeth, but you can't see them on the outside. They're all chipped on the inside, so I got lucky that way. The scar is under my chin, so I'm lucky that way, I guess, and uh, I know I'm getting a new tooth on Friday, so that's it. Hello, um, we just flew into Melbourne, Australia. Weather's good. Uh, it's about 9.30 in the morning. Should be fun. There's nothing better than getting off a 15-hour flight with food poisoning, crapping the whole time, and getting your baggage to find out that your camera was stolen and half the tapes that you brought with you were stolen. Our first stop was Melbourne. We flew right in, and for some reason, everyone decided to skate the uh, park where we were going to do the demo on the first day we flew in. It's kind of like a backside loop slide. It just goes right to like falls, but bounces. I saw it and I acted like I didn't see it because you, all you heard was the crowd like, Finally got here, got to settle down and start skating the city of Melbourne, which has turned out to be quite amazing as far as no skateboarding signs. So it's a skater's paradise here. We've been having lots of fun. We've done two demos already. First one went really well. Like hands down, the best thing was Justin Strubing did a board side up this heinous kinker across and down this impossible rail.
we went to this go around and everybody just cleared like big ass circle. You know, people were like not walking where everybody's skating because everybody had it all blocked off. Like there was a crowd, Tosh was chomping it up, like everybody was cheering them on, like everybody was psyched. He's the best. Thanks. Second night we go, it was just like sprackers everywhere. And this one drunk guy just kept walking in front, like just kept getting in Eric's way, getting in his way. Like it didn't work out the way we thought it would. I think he was just trying to front board the rail. Gets on, this lady just comes out of nowhere, and just pow, just nails it, knocks her over. So there was just so many people there, and yeah, you're bound to run into someone. So it looked like it really helped a lot. She just popped back up, yeah, good day, boom, ran off. You know, I think she's part kangaroo or something. She just hopped right up, took off running. Oh, Mike Johnson was a good time. He skated so good. He was like probably what I thought was like one of the better like people to have on that trip because like he would do the tricks that no one else would do. Mark Johnson, he's killing it. Mark Johnson's just, you know, so talented. I, I he's sick, man. Just does the best now, like backside flips, like over like the little hips. Just so good. Yeah, he's just got so much, so much grace and finesse. It's, it's insane. Like you can just watch him, and like it can help your skating. Like it helps mine. But I'll never be Mark Johnson. Oh my gosh, I'm a celebrity mom. He chooses really good tricks to do. Yeah, he did some amazing stuff. Nollie, front foot, kick flip, the fakie over a hip, like perfect. He's definitely funny. He's, he's one of those people who can uh, copy people to a T. He can do impressions. So perfect. And it's hilarious when you get him going on him and stuff like that. Uh, we're in the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. The local park here is um, called Pizzy Park. Uh, we're going to do a demo there after the signing we, at the shop we just did. When I was on the trip, I would always try and talk to people and they'd be like, yeah, later, and like blow me off, but Ed would always talk, you know? He's good at hamming it up. Like of all the pros on the trip, I'm the one who's been ripping the hardest, with possibly the exception of Chad Vardy, you know? One of the craziest things was Chad Vardy, he went out of that quarter pipe to Axel on the back of that. That was pretty crazy. He did a send doggy fly out to Axel stall on this super high fence on the end of a quarter pipe and then aired back into the quarter pipe. We're in Sydney right now, this is our hotel room, and uh, we've got about five or six more days to go on tour, and it's been fun so far. Everyone thinks Bondi is like this wonderland, and it is a paradise for sure, but they think like Bondi is the best, man, topless beach, ramp, what, what could be better? But I mean, we were there, and uh, the only people, the only women who go topless are 80 year old women. So you're just seeing something that the nipple is down at their knee. It is a great place. I mean, not many places there's a ramp with the possibility of a topless beach, I suppose. Uh, Aaron Sosky was uh, skating a rail off about five or six stairs that went around the corner. 
Then he almost backside tail slid it. Almost killed himself, escaping death. Like, stuck his leg over a bar, and then like somehow got it back over. Susky, Aaron Susky, man, he is a machine. That guy. MVP. <laughs> He gets the MVP of the, of the chip, I think. I think everyone was really taken back by how good he was. And you know, there's a lot of little kids who are insane coming out of the woodwork who can just do whatever you want down a rail. But this guy is like the whole package. It's like an indoor park and it's pretty small and it's just lined with kids. Reynolds skates in, like just skates in and everyone just ah, ah like a standing ovation. The dude is yet to even flip his award. He didn't even have to do a single trick. Kids were just so psyched to see him that they just, like it was just, it was pandemonium. The loudest cheers I've ever heard in my life. Like they were waiting for Reynolds for like their whole lives. Like he came in and everybody just started screaming his name. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. And he walks in, everybody's like screaming, it's like, I don't know, like some god just walked in. He was at one demo, skating under the influence, and the kids loved it, of course. Did like a 50-50 switch dance, switch dance back or something on a thing, like joking around, and the kids were eating it up. Boy, they went nuts, man. Like, <laughs> look at, you got the video game star coming in. <laughs> I don't know, did you talk to Reynolds? Like, I mean, do you really interview the dude for showing up for one day? <laughs> Skated that one demo, and then woke up one day, just sort of like, with a bad feeling, like, I gotta get out of here. He started saying, like, I, I gotta go, man, I'm having anxiety attacks, like, I'm really stressed out, man, I, I'm not feeling the tour, I gotta, I gotta get home. It was fun, though, when it lasted, man. But I just, like, I don't know, I just had to get out of there. Just had to go back to California. Probably came to terms with himself, like, yo, I gotta break out before I just become a crazy wasteland. Sydney, we had this second story window over the street, and somehow we picked up water balloons somewhere. They were throwing the water balloons out, and the security comes to their door, and they knew it was security. And, you know, we turn the lights off and pretend we're sleeping. So, so Marx actually was dressed, knocks on the door, gets completely undressed. They turn off all the lights, he answers the door naked, and acts like he's sleeping, like he's all. And the guy's like, excuse me, sir, uh, are you water? He's like, what? Water ballooning? I'm sleeping, dude. <laughs> like completely naked, just standing there. <laughs> his, his dick was hanging out. <laughs> it was so rad. I couldn't deal with it, man. I was laughing too hard. Fucking Ed Templeton, dude. That's, oh, man, that's so gnarly, bro. It's naked and shit.
off the screw from my board. He had it like first go, he landed on it, and like all the other times he was like rocking. He was just like almost getting sacked on his board. So I just gave it to him. Some kids are really nice. They're really stoked if they get like a shirt or a board or something, you know? But then there's some kids who are just like, hey, give me this, give me this, give me that, give me that. Like they just want this product for like nothing. Tasha's a punk, all right? Tasha's a punk the whole trip. I still have scars from Tosh, too. Punching his punk ass calves. Straight out brawl. I hate Tosh. Oh my god, dude. That's all hits. Just from punching your calves and getting jacked? That kid's got a lot of energy, man. And he's fun to punch, dude. He is so fun to beat up. Oh, look at him. <laughs> I'd be trying to whip him in the face with a towel, you'd be so mad at him, you know? Like, <laughs> you wanted to kill him, and then people would be like, hey, come on, man, you're supposed to be an adult, and this is like a little kid, and I'm just like, I don't care anymore, you know? He loved it, because the minute you were done, he would do it again. You're a bitch! <laughs> I, I dole out, like, Punishment after punishment, and all he does is come back for more. Every time, he's all he wants is more abuse. He's the biggest masochist I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and just right back for more. Kicks me, tries some shit, like loves it, just loves it. Oh, get him, man. Get him. Yeah, last demo. Man, it's a bummer. It's raining because. These kids were psyched. It was one of the few good parks that we've been skating. I mean, it might clear up. I'd be down to skate more, but there's nowhere to go right now. It's getting too dangerous out there, so we're just gonna call it a day, I think. All in all, the tour was a success. The trip was amazing. A lot of amazing skaters, a lot of amazing uh, stuff went down. Okay. I've known Chad Simpson for um, a few years now, and uh, he's always been a super cool, genuinely nice guy with an uh, unbelievable skill level on a skateboard. He can basically do anything he wants. It's like to have him on the team, and you can see Tim Tim and the rest of the New Deal squad in the first New Deal video of the millennium, currently in production.
I'm Rob Dyrdek. We are here today at my place in Los Angeles, California. This is the uh, first of my two living spaces. I usually spend the weekends up here because there's nowhere to street skate in San Diego. Everybody knows that. And uh, we're going to get into my crib up here. Well, this is the epitome of a skate house. Enter at your own risk, as they say. <laughs> products, trash, cameras, and of course with all great skate houses, we have total skateboarders. A la our good friend Anthony Papalardo here. What's up? Dill. Dill, a great necessity to all skate houses. And here's my roommate that lives with us in the Santee Van England, his home. Hey, dude. Now I know you can't smell this, because believe me, you would be completely disgusted. This is what's supposed to be my bathroom, but there's just cat dump in the back. It's never been clean not one time in the entire year that I have lived here. But then again, this is a skate house. This, this is what happens. That's how you live when you're at a skate house. This is my bedroom. Get a close look at that. That is Peter Smolik on a Joker playing card, punching the card. Now, that is very rare. It's quite exciting. As we move on, this is our boy Anthony's home. As you can see, he lives like a dump. This is quite disgusting. I think that ought to do it. House number one, LA, the Hollywood projects. You got skaters everywhere, and it's always dirty. All right, this is my crib in SD. Uh, uh, this is like what I like to call home. It's a Jonathan Siegel Row home right downtown, downtown San Diego. It's my real lifestyle right here. I got paintings by all skate-related artists. This one's by Kenzie. I got this table set up here, Vernon Patton's Z chairs from the 70s. Paul Higgins PH5 lamp from the 60s. We got this painting again, skate-related, Gio Estevez. My favorite painting, thank you, Kite. You see right here, it says Maps and Skaters, Homes, Homes, spelled like Pesoy and Hose in reverse. First bathroom, got the turntables, mini turntable set from Japan on the wall. This is the last deck Christian Soy ever had. Pretty rare thing to have these days. So this is my Neil Blender board. I got this in 19, about 1986. A month after I started skating, I went to a contest and he was getting into a car packed full of people and I said, you know, I don't think there's room for that board. And he said, you're right. And I remember this day it coming at me in slow motion as a child. Like, I rode this thing for like a year. As you can just see, it's just tattered, but it's just a pure Neil Blender. You know what I mean? Got the Paolo Piva bed by b, b Italia. You know, looking real tight. The Serenade side table with my fake ID frame. Now I keep my fake ID frame because, you know, I've been arrested, I've been beat up, I've been gambling, going crazy since 18 with that thing, and I somehow always seem to have it, so, you know, it's, it let, reminds me of how serious partying can get at a young age. This is my bathroom. You can see, like, just straight walk in, pour cement, like, ah. See, 
we got the E-Class. That's what we roll in. You know how we do it? It's like uh, 19 inch Lorenzo's, little Bravis body kit. We got the VCR, this changer. Got two tens in the back. You know, we got the TVs. Ah! DVD right there. Okay, where we're at here right now, this is the world famous TF, aka the training facility. This is basically my third home during the week. I spend every single night here in the world famous TF. And this place itself is a little bit a little bit more special than the average skate park due to how the obstacles were designed by different individual pros like the quarter pipe here. Uh, Matt Hensley came out and uh, sized it up, got the right transitions. He's uh, very well known for his high quarter pipe skills. We had him come out and uh, do the quarter pipe. We asked the Gons to do the uh, centerpiece now. The Gons is obviously very busy, so what he did is he kind of like sketched it out on an art pad for us, you know what I'm saying? And we just kind of like took his ideas and, and brought it into real wood form here. Now, I don't know if you remember not as Coppice, did a lot of front side flips on some big banks, so he came on down and did a little design work for us on the banks. He made it seven foot. You know, we never really expected it to get like that, but he did a really good job for us. As you can imagine, it's a very high caliber skateboard park with a lot of history in it. I live SD and LA. This is Pro Skateboarding 2001. DC Alien Workshop and neighbors, partiers, crackheads, construction, view takers, airports, trains, storage, cars, cash, money holes.
This is my favorite graphic of all time. Uh, it's a board I did for Rodney Mullen. It's copied from a black light velvet poster I bought on Hollywood Boulevard. I did it for Rodney when he was on tour, probably like 1990. We uh, printed the boards up and sent them out to the shop he was doing a demo at, you know, without him knowing about it. I don't think he's much into rock and roll. Yeah, the Krager Mixmaster, it's called. I mean, that would be a more serious uh, choice for favorite graphic. I got the idea when I saw this DJ. This guy, Kid Koala, was mixing four turntables at once. I just thought that would make a good graphic, and I increased it to uh, nine turntables. <laughs> <laughs>
There is, in other words, a secret conspiracy, and the conspiracy is this. The state opposes itself to the people. The state opposes itself to the people. The state opposes itself to the people. You're going to get up and push your board out forward so that your truck locks on. You want to scoop your tail into it just like a backside ollie tail. Don't scam them. Do the bash into no slide. That's whack. Keep throwing it around. Let it get the spin. It's basically a lot of good timing and good eye coordination. I love the smell of my pump in the morning. Hey, yo, I heard you sing, well, you better make a whole new song. If they said that school's tight, then they told you wrong. Clown niggas, you ain't got a chance at all. Big L, Cody on, so advance for y'all. I make moves with boss all across the world. So don't be upset if I toss your girl. I got cheddar to blow, pockets never get low. Oh, just sweat me wherever I go. I cruise in the GS Lex, Cartier Specs. Nordica sweats with the fresh Gore-Tex. Shoes with baguettes, swinging like the Mets. Throwing the dice and taking all side bets. Never bummy, sit bummy. Get money when I hit honey, she felt the skin of tummy on the lead low. I see dope from here to Rio, flamboyant records, seat to the EO. What? Yo, only our weed people fall back. G rapping big L, we all at. Going back to back where they roll at. Swing and walk the small back. Leaving big holes with small gas. Have them all falling where the wall at. Only our weed people fall back. G rapping big L, we all at. Going back to back where they roll at. Swing and walk the tall back. Leaving big holes with small gas. Have them all falling where the wall at. So we gotta talk about Hubba. Well, the on video is doing this thing about Hubba. Yeah, I remember thinking that's a giant cement rail. Weird. I got to it and was just in shock. Like, oh my god, this thing's as tall as I am. There's no pussyfooting at Hubba. Getting into the trick was 2% of the deal. It was coming out off that drop and then having that feeling of like sliding up to the block, like. 
definitely been like a spot for people, you know, it's definitely world famous. People come from all over the place to take a bite out of it and see what they can do, you know? You know, there's only a few places that you can actually remember what was done and who did it. And I think Hubba was definitely one of the biggest ones. This is the story of San Francisco's legendary ledge, Hubba Hideout. Located near the famed Justin Herman Plaza, or EMB, the ledge was part of a pedestrian walkway, but more commonly used by the local skaters and vagrants for nefarious activities. As street skating evolved in San Francisco, the locals realized Hubba Hideout is more than a place to party at. The first published photo was of Wade Spire in Thrasher, 1989. I have to give props to Wade. It was the first video of Hubba, the crooked grind. Even though he wasn't the first person to do anything on it, but it was the first thing I'd ever seen, and it was on something that I'd never seen anybody skate, really, at that time. I think it's the first Plan B video where Rick Howard fronts I know sides it and everything's clean. It's like it's still square, and like even like they look like the bricks are clean. It was just perfect, and it was front side and back side, and you could skate there all day without getting kicked out, usually. Like, we would skate there as long as we wanted until we got really tired or really hurt. documentation appeared in magazines and videos, skaters from all over the world began showing up, and Hubba became a measuring stick for those willing to step up to the challenge. I have to say front side blind side cross shimmering was probably one of the first groundbreaking tricks. Back to when any nose guy is pretty burly. Definitely some danger potential there. I never saw it, but I heard Steve Olsen did some crazy shit down there. God damn, I gotta do this shit on an empty stomach. It took skateboarding in the area to eventually attract the attention of the police, despite the years of previous illegal activities that gave Hubba Hideout its name. Hubba Hideout, <laughs> because, I, because it was like kind of hidden. A lot of people would go up there, like, like bombs and stuff, and smoke their crack and stuff. And that's what we call Hubba, we call crack Hubba's. So. <laughs> Vandal Freak, now ID, now. But it was called Hubba. Hideout way before it was even skated. It was called Hubba Hideout for like probably years, you know. Like once in a while, like homeless people would kick you out because they'd be sleeping at the bottom. Like you're not skating today. We're having a barbecue here or something. I mean, there was a period of time where no one was really doing too many gnarly tricks. Like everyone tried to slack off and do a bunch of Smith guys. And then I think it was probably around the time Fred Goff came through. Did some sick shit on there. And then everyone got sparked again. It's so amazing. Another thing that if you've never been there that you don't know is the huge drop on the other side. That's what made it even sketchier doing lines from the top too because that first ledge that goes down and then goes flat, when you get onto that, if you mess up and fall over the other side, I mean you're going over like a 40 foot drop and you're probably going to die. I've seen some crazy nuts manually down that thing, like over the street and stuff. Another good one is uh, Ryan Johnson using it as a jump ramp up top. I thought one of the best tricks was uh, Marcus McBride's heel flip 50 50. That was just cool and different. LeVar had his fair share of just the most ridiculous tricks down it. Yeah, it's so many damn tricks. Josh Kalis, it's switch tail side. Switch backside tail side. SSBST. Yeah. 
You don't go to Hubba to do a trick unless you're ready to step up. If you go for it and you're not really ready, it's pretty hard to jump away from it because you, you'd be committed. Like if one leg was up there and one leg was kind of off, you'd, you're going down. The gnarliest thing I ever saw there was just, I don't know, it was this really spontaneous thing of Brian Anderson. Like, we were just at the X Games and we had to meet Brad Stabba. You know, he wasn't even planning on doing anything. And like five or six tries, he does a tail slide big spin. You know, and I shot two tries, just loaded up my camera and, and shot it. He did it on the third try that I shot. That was his day, you know? Probably the gnarliest things have gone down is Danny Garcia's knife flip, no side out, sick. Front side blunt to fakie is pretty raw, just how high it is. Carl Watson, front side no side, 270 the pretzel way, that was impressive. I remember just hearing about it and just going, I don't know, that was the one trick that no one had ever done, and it looked like one of the hardest ones to do. Like, I thank Eric for just that one last, just brilliance on Hubbies. It was just amazing. I just started by posing it, and it somehow like started to feel good, and then once it felt like I could potentially make it, I was just trying my fastest, I think, to do it and get it over with and just get out of there. It sucks because, you know, a lot of places are getting skate stopped and you can, you know, work around it, but they really did this one in, you know. They drill holes in the top, holes in the bottom, and then the piece goes in, in there, and then they fill it up. So you'd have to either cut it off and then slice the uh, bolt off, but I don't think it would work. I think it's totally lame that they nubbed it, though, because there's seriously nobody goes there. Occasionally, like a business person will walk through, you know what I mean? Hubba Hideout, to my generation, it was our upland, it was our pipeline. It just was, man. I mean, corner or not, for the people who went there and did their shit, you know that feeling, what it's like to ride away from there. It's kind of a bummer that you can't sit there and think of a trick and go, let's only do it on Hubba and then go there. It's, you can't. Despite being shut down for good, Hubba's influence will be felt for many years in contest courses, video games, and other spots sought out for the similarities to the legendary ledge. That must be the most difficult fucker to interview with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. Fun, fun. I'm sucking at this right now, you know? <laughs> the chair broke, I think. Are you fing out of your gourd? Is this this guy's fire? 
See, I, that's what people say, but I like more links, more diamonds, kids. Plus, it's all flashy. It's always moving around, you know what I mean? What is your guys' favorite thing about skateboarding? Yeah, when someone like lands a fat trick and everyone goes sick. I just don't want to look like Atiba did, you know, when Atiba was like looking up at. <laughs> Film this, Ricky! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I'm so embarrassed, like, my house is so dirty. <laughs> Look how red his face is. This is what comes with the skate house. Dirty cat ass. If you can't smell that, but believe me, it smells terrible. 